Victoria Joel and I'm based in Manchester, England. I would say Manchester has been alright, not to say there have not been ups and downs, but what can I say? I've been to pleasant places, met new people. It's been a whole different experience for me compared to the quiet neighborhood I came from back in Ireland. Maybe I can call it my second home now, but I still believe what's to make me feel at home is my roots. The Nigerian culture has always been part of me right from childhood. The food, the music, the attires, the tradition, everything. The Nigerian culture, or even the African culture as a whole, is indeed a beauty. The food so tantalizing, the colors so vibrant, the tribes and traditions are so unique, diverse and intriguing. So much color, patterns and style to their native attire, which brings out the true beauty of the culture and most importantly, the beauty of our skin. There's so much respect in the culture, which was instilled in me right from childhood. The good morals are one thing I take pride in, from how the elderly are addressed and respected, to how good moral values and principles are incorporated, producing well-mannered and behaved individuals. Let me not talk about our hair texture and hairstyles. Amazing. Our hair is another thing that truly makes our identity. But here is where one problem lies. The fact that some white folks have the right to touch it, just to see how it feels or whether it's real. This may make some of us less confident of our pride, question our identity or think less of our beauty and culture. But nonetheless, our organic, gorgeous and glamorous thick Afro hair is our pride. For me, Africa is a beautiful continent with beautiful sights that produces a bunch of talented, wise, creative and ambitious individuals that have impacted and influenced society positively in whatever part of the world they're in, of which many have made history and became household names, including African Americans who I believe are still part of us. We're talking about people who broke barriers and brought about change. People like Rosa Parks, a civil rights activist who helps initiate racial equality and refused to give up her bus seat to a white man in Montgomery, Alabama. Martin Luther King Jr., who equally fought for racial equality, made his I Had a Dream speech and led marches for blacks' rights to vote. Nelson Mandela, who fought for the rights of black people in South Africa and became South Africa's first black president. Barack Obama, who also became America's first African-American president. Yemi Adenoga, a Nigerian-Irish politician, community organizer, and advocate for social injustice, who became Ireland's first black female public representative and Meath County Council first migrant councillor. Moiwa Alariwaju, a British Nigerian who is the UK's biggest gospel artist, the director of Premier Gospel, the number one gospel station in the UK and who is the UK's first Christian artist to receive the Queen's Order of British Empire Medal, which was presented to him by Prince William. The list goes on, but it will always be part of my memory because we can never talk about Africa without talking about the Africans that made history home and abroad. Black is beautiful, we say. I believe it truly is, although inequality is evident Racism exists even to this day. Most of black people living in Europe are likely to experience racial abuse or systemic racism at least, at least once in their lifetime, which to me may prove the ignorance of what we're capable of and the equality we share as human beings despite the color of our skin. But no matter what they say or do, black is beautiful indeed. Black is power.